Good afternoon. I am Reverend Rosalind Hamblin, and I welcome you to Midweek Spiritual Nuggets from the Bethlehem and Faith Moravian Congregations in Barbados. We thank you for joining us via Facebook or YouTube as we pause in the middle of the week at this midday hour to reflect on some nuggets of truth from God's Word. We have taken as our focus for this season of Lent the theme, Nurturing Growth and Regrowth in the Congregation. With the pandemic in our midst, many different facets of church and the community have been impacted over the last two years. How can the church nurture growth or regrowth in the face of these challenging circumstances. We have been taking a look at some of the areas that have been adversely impacted and seeking to show how God's Word addresses these circumstances. Throughout the period of Lent, we have been led by some of our members in reflection on these areas of concern and uh, consider how we can make a difference. Today, we have Sister Clausa Ford looking at leadership. Welcome. The daily text reading for today, Wednesday, April 6, 2022, I will now share with you before we go into our nuggets for today. The watchword for today says, Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord? Or, as his counselor has instructed him, Isaiah 40, verse 13. <laughs> the hymn writer says, God of wisdom, truth, and beauty, God of spirit, fire, and and soul, God of order, love, and duty, God of purpose, plan, and goal. Grant us visions ever growing, breath of life, eternal strength, mystic spirit moving, flowing, filling height and depth and length. The doctrinal text, all the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, and how inscrutable his ways. Romans 11, verse 33. The supporting hymn verse, Sing, pray, and keep his ways unswerving. Offer your service faithfully, and trust his word, though undeserving. You'll find his promise true to be. God never will forsake in need the soul that trusts in him indeed. Let us pray. Spirit of wisdom, we lay our all before you, our minds, senses, and perceptions, our hearts, emotions, and attitudes. Take us, mold us, make us, use us to accomplish your holy purposes. Indeed, O oh Lord, we honor, worship, adore you, recognizing how great you are. So grant us your wisdom this, this day, that as we hear from you through your servant, we may give our hearts to such knowledge, such wisdom, and we may live thereby, ensuring victory and success in all our undertakings. Guide us then as we reflect on your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's scripture reading 
is Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 27. This will be read by Charlene Ford, Sister Clausel's daughter. Today's meditation is leadership for growth and regrowth in the congregation. The Bible passage is Luke 22, 24 to 27. A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table, but I am among you as one who serves? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What is leadership? One definition says that leadership is the ability of an individual or a group of individuals to influence and guide followers or other members of an organization. Leadership therefore involves interaction with other persons and occurs when persons influence others. How do we identify leadership? One does not have to look far to find leadership. It can be found in the home, community organizations, and the church, to name a few. If leadership is found in all walks of life, one would imagine that there is no shortage of leadership, right? Maybe. But perhaps there may be a shortage of the right kind of leadership. So how can leadership influence church for growth and regrowth? Here are a few areas which are important to the church's growth. The first is the characteristics of a leader. What are some of the characteristics required of a godly leader? God's kingdom is very different from the world's kingdom. In God's kingdom, leadership is servanthood. Biblical leaders, including the greatest leader ever, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, call themselves or were called servants. For example, Moses and Joshua were called servants. Many apostles called themselves servants of Jesus Christ. That servanthood is synonymous with leadership is not surprising. Jesus in Matthew twenty twenty six to 28 said, Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. For, ev- for even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. We should have the attitude of Jesus, because even though Jesus was God, he humbled himself, became a servant, and was obedient, even dying on a cross. Philippians 2, 5-7 Servanthood is key to nurturing growth and regrowth in the congregation, and we should serve sincerely. Jesus put on his servant's attire and washed his disciples' feet. The significance of this is that everyone must serve the other. Everyone can become a servant. Servants are always needed who will put the needs of others before their own needs. Moses did not focus on himself or put himself first. Even when others opposed his leadership, Moses did not defend himself. God defended him and confirmed him as leader. If we study the story of Moses, we will agree that leading the Israelites was a very difficult task. But Moses persevered and remained humble. And this is another characteristic of leadership, humility. God can direct a humble person but a proud person he will resist. Leaders must be obedient to God. Obedience is following God with singleness of mind. Matthew 6.33 says, But strive first for the kingdom of God 
and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. Our life's goal, like these leaders, should be to serve God while remaining humble, obedient, honest, and courageous in the face of challenges. Servants can make a difference in the world. If we have a church full of servants, we will also have a church full of leaders and the church will grow. Secondly, leaders must ensure their own personal development and growth by having a vision for their own development and that of their members. Proverbs 29.16 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. Without vision, there is no progress or growth. Leaders must remain relevant, constantly developing themselves, reading, and keeping abreast of information needed for development. Leaders must grow spiritually by communicating regularly with God, reading, studying, and meditating on His Word, praying, and seeking God in everything. Dream big. Increase your network with other churches and leaders. Encourage yourself in the Lord like David did if you become discouraged. Ask God to increase your capacity like Jabez so you can do more. Spend time in prayer like Daniel. Spend time with God like Moses and Joshua. Jesus daily set aside time to spend with God. Alone time with God builds us up spiritually and empower us to deal with challenges. The more time spent in communion with God, the better servants our leader we will become and we will grow spiritually. Leaders seek God in everything, no matter how small, as failure to do so may have consequences. Joshua made a decision without seeking God. Joshua chapter 9 tells about it. Take some time to read it for yourself. Joshua made a league with the Gibeonites, and he later found out that they tricked him into believing that they had come from a far country when they were in fact his neighbors. However, once the decision is made, the leader must show integrity, respect that decision, and honor his word. Joshua showed this when he led the battle against the Amorites on behalf of the Gibeonites and it is at that battle that Joshua commanded the son not to set until he had defeated them. Joshua 10.14 says, And there was no day like that before or after that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. This drives home the point that leaders do not sit back and send others to do the work. The leader leads by example into the battle. Good leaders listen and use wise advisors. A single person's perspective and understanding is limited, not having all the facts or being blinded by biased emotions or wrong impression. He should seek counsel of others and be open to their advice. Then, after considering all the facts, make his decision. Proverbs 11.14 states that without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. One commentator says that two eyes see more than one eye, and mutual advice is mutual assistance. Intimacy with God is critical. Moses had a very intimate relation with God, carrying out God's will. Some of the things he did may seem very strange to us, like speaking to a rock for water. But to Moses, it was God's instructions, and he did it. How many of us will be willing to do something strange because God asks us to do it? Will we, we be concerned about our reputation and what others think of us if God asks us to do something unconventional? Thirdly, leaders must develop others. Can leaders' relationship with members create growth or decline? Yes, leadership is temporary, so develop other leaders to carry on. Biblical leaders were for a particular time and they had specific goals. Once the goals are completed, new, new leaders emerge. 
Jesus' goal included mentoring his disciples. After his death, resurrection, and ascension, the apostles, the new leaders, emerged to carry on the Great Commission. Moses led Israel for 40 plus years, and then Joshua took over, leading Israel into the Promised Land. Leaders should encourage members in areas of their giftedness. They should pray for members individually and develop members via training sessions emphasizing the value of personal development. If the members see the leaders developing themselves, they too will follow. Know your members' capabilities and their faults. Lead with compassion. Moses asked God not to destroy the Israelites, his people, whom he brought out of Egypt. Even though a promotion would have elevated him, Moses chose to remind God that the Israelites were his people. Leaders must be willing to follow too. They must take care of the needs of the people first before their own needs. Joshua divided the land among the people before he received his portion. The lesson here is take care of others first and you will gain their trust and respect. Be impartial without favoritism. Everyone is important to God and that is how the leader should see those they are leading. James chapter 2 speaks to the sin of discrimination. Treat everyone equally and fairly in spite of their eminence or social status. Servanthood or leadership is fundamental to Christian living, affecting all aspects of the church. Leaders must think outside the church wall and look at possibilities. We just have to look around for something that we notice needs attention and work at improving it. There is much room for collaboration between the youth and the elderly. One is full of the energy that is needed by the other, and the other has the wisdom that is needed by the other. When it comes to finance, I believe that if the other needs are taken care of, finances will follow. Sometimes, what we focus on is not the fundamental thing that is required. Work at serving others in love and building trust. When persons have a sense of belonging and look forward to worshiping with other members of the church, growth will take place, and also there will be growth and regrowth, even in finance. Leaders must have a vision for the future. They must have a global vision for the church, especially with the advent of technology, as there is greater connectivity with everyone no matter where they are. Reaching out to others and sharing the word with those who are not members of the church will produce positive results. The COVID-19 pandemic has affected so many persons in many different ways and many are in need. Looking for ways how we can serve or help them and doing it will not only bless them but us as well. The abilities of your individual members and the group as a whole work together to create unity and cohesion in the congregation. In conclusion, as we seek to lead for growth and regrowth, it is important that we do it the biblical way. Develop the characteristic needed for godly leadership. Leadership is not a one-man show. It involves other persons. Utilize the, utilize the person around us, their opinions, advice, assistance, and encouragement. Wise leaders have mentors to help and guide them. Develop others through teaching and mentoring and focus on serving others rather than on making your mark. And remember to share the gospel with others. In closing, I say, learn to control your emotions as they can affect the outcome of situations. Commit your plans to the Lord, honor God most, and your plans will succeed. May God bless our efforts to grow and regrow the congregation.
Amen. We say thanks to Sister Closer for leading us in reflection on leadership and reminding us that leadership requires submission and involves a servanthood, humility, and obedience. With reliance on God's guidance and teamwork with others, we can achieve the leadership God desires of us and for his congregation. Thank you, Sister Clausel and Charlene. Before we go, here are a few reminders for you. Our Lenten services continue tonight at 7.30 p.m. in the Bethlehem Sanctuary. We invite you to be present with us and, of course, to follow our live stream on Facebook and YouTube. Our webinar on gender-based violence and mental health issues continues with part two this Friday, April 8th at 7.30 p.m. We invite you to join you as a panel looks at these issues and we will share with you the credentials so that you can join us on the Zoom platform to participate in this webinar. Touch and go for the youth of the Moravian Church in the Barbados Conference continues this Saturday, the 9th of April at 3 p.m. for the 9 to 12 age group and at 4.30 p.m. for the 13 plus age group. The theme for Touch and Go is He's Alive. Holy Week readings continue throughout Holy Week with the Passion Week and Eastertide booklet a harmony of the Gospels, recounting the last week in the life of Christ, his passion, crucifixion, and resurrection. The services will be conducted by different pastorates and stream on the conference's YouTube channel at 7.30 nightly. Our pastorate, Bethlehem and Faith, We'll meet in the Bethlehem Sanctuary from where the service will be streamed live on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Our Good Friday services, 8 a.m. at Faith, 10 a.m. at Bethlehem. Easter services, 5 a.m. our Easter sunrise service, followed later in the morning, by a 10 a.m. service at Bethlehem. At faith, the service is at 8 a.m. Easter bake sale at Bethlehem by orders. Please contact Sister Eudora Maskell to place your order for your Easter baked goodies. Unity Prayer Watch, a prayer chain continuing throughout the year and across the world by Moravians, will be picked up by our own pastorate, Bethlehem and Faith, on April 11 from 10 p.m. until 10 a.m. on April 12. Please register your prayer time with Brother Earl of Bethlehem or Sister Maureen of Faith. And uh, let's keep the prayer chain unbroken as we participate in this ongoing prayer watch. Do bear in your prayers our sick, recovering, shutting members 
And pray especially for Sister Marjorie Kelman of Bethlehem, who is hospitalized as well as Brother Duncan Harris, the husband of Sister Esther at Faith, who too has been hospitalized. Our Provincial Synod for the Eastern West Indies Province will be held July 17th to 22nd, 2022, virtually. Please take note of the adjustment to the Provincial Synod. It's now being held from the 17th to the 22nd of July. And it is really a hybrid of virtual and in-person as conferences will meet in person but provincially and across the region, we will be meeting virtually. Continue to bear in your prayers, the preparation towards the sinners, as well as the delegates who shall be attending, and the discussions and deliberations, and voting elections that shall take place at the synod. Pray for God's guidance that his will may be done in all things. Our divine worship this Sunday, faith at 8 a.m., Bethlehem at 10 a.m. And we remind you that this coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. So bring out your palms as we Share in worship, recognizing and celebrating Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem and singing our well-loved Hosanna anthem. We look forward to sharing with you on these occasions, as well as our Sunday online services at 10 a.m. via our Facebook pages and our YouTube channel. Join us again next Wednesday for another finding of Midweek Spiritual Nuggets. And join the Moravian Church Barbados Conference for our radio broadcast, Moravian Voice, on Life 97.5 FM at 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. I take this opportunity to wish you, on behalf of the Bethlehem and Faith Congregations, God's guidance as you reflect during this season of Lent. And as you recount the passion of Christ and his vicarious death, and as you celebrate his victorious and glorious resurrection, God bless you richly, and may you have a blessed week. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, we give you thanks once more that you have considered us unworthy though we be, to be your children, to be called into your service. We thank you and commit ourselves to give you the service that you desire. As leaders call to set example for your kingdom, for your servants within this world, we seek your divine guidance, your strength, your courage, that we may do those things which are necessary. Father, remind us that leadership calls for submission and servanthood, that it involves humility and obedience, that as leaders, we must engage in teamwork with the other members of your team, Lord. And so, labor for your vineyard. For it is not our work, but it is yours. And we are all co-workers in your vineyard. Guide us then as we seek to fulfill your call to us. Grant us that commitment to serve diligently. 
And so to be an example to others that they may be able to experience that you are ever with them. You are there to lift them up. You, O oh Lord, will grant them the victory as they put their trust in you. So may we live in your victory and share the same with your people that they too may be brought into your fold. Grant therefore that your blessings may be upon us and be shared with others we encounter from moment to moment. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. <music>